We're building a CLI in Go to let you convert interactive fiction written in Markdown to books that you can publish in the Kindle store. Our CLI is powerful, but the ergonomics aren't feeling great. In this episode, we'll be using the Go library Cobra to improve our CLI's ergonomics. As an example, right now the way that it works is Squire and then filename.md, and that will give you validation errors if there are any and tell you how to fix your story. But you could also do this and convert it to HTML, or you can do this and convert it to HTML and specify the file name. And you know, likewise, you could do EPUB. And the problem with this approach, the, the real thing that irks me about this is that there's an implied verb here as a subcommand. So what this really should be is validate. So Squire, which is the name of the format, the name of the program, validate, file name. This one should be convert, likewise here and here. And what this means is that as we go, when we want to support something like Squire play with a file name, it's just a new subcommand and everything works great. Cobra is, as it says, for creating powerful modern CLI applications. And it lists some good examples, Kubernetes, Hugo, and the GitHub CLI, which you probably have used. Cobra is pretty easy to get going with, uh, and it does have a config file that you can set up. I've gone ahead and set the author in my Cobra config so I can avoid having to pass that in as a flag every time. Let's take a quick look at the Cobra docs on cobra.dev. And we see that it's easy to install. Uh, this installs it as part of your project so that you can import it. But you're probably going to prefer to use the Cobra CLI, the generator. So we can hop over here and that link doesn't work. Hmm. Might be a uh, PR in the future there. So instead, what we'll do is we'll scroll down here and we can get to the generator down here at the bottom. So we'll follow the instructions here and install the latest version of the generator. All right, having done that, we'll start a new branch and we will start with a Cobra CLI init. What this is going to do is set up our app to use Cobra. And so we can actually look at the git status and see what's different. So it added itself as a dependency to our Go mod and the Go sum changed as a result. It added a license file. We actually don't want that because we already have a license.md. So we'll remove that. Then it added a command root and a main.go. So let's just look at main.go real quick. And as you can see, it pulled in our author information. I don't actually care for this front matter, but if you don't specify it, then you end up with like placeholder text. So I'm just going to delete it. Uh, there's nothing wrong with it, but I don't feel like I need it. So in our main.go, what we see is that all it does is call command.execute. It imports command, which is a package that it sets up. So if we look at root.go, we see that we have a root command that represents the base command that will be called without any subcommands. And so it comes with uh, the usage, a short description, a long description, which you want to update to actually reflect what your app does. And then it's going to call execute. Uh, execute adds all the child commands to root commands and sets flags appropriately, as it says here. It's called by main.main, .main, and it only needs to happen once to the root command. Here we can define our flags and configuration settings that are persistent across all of our commands. And I actually don't want any there, so we're just gonna comment this out. We will leave the comments here because they might be useful later. If we do a go run main.go, Here's the default output we get. So I'm just going to edit this in fast forward mode. And now if you run it again, we see this. Um, small tweak here. There we go. All right. So we're going to add this and call it set up Cobra. Now we're ready to add our first command and we're going to start with our validate command. We'll be covering validate and convert. So we will do Cobra CLI add validate. And this is going to create validate in the same folder as the root. And again, we have a usage and a short and long description. So we're going to take a file name.md and this will validate a Squire story. Perfect. 
Perfect. That should get us started. All right, and so we actually don't need any flags for this. We may later support flags to have different output formats for the validation errors, but we're not going to have any here, so we'll just get rid of that. We need to modify our run command for validate to actually do something, but for now, we'll see how our main.go has changed. So now we see our description, then we see usage, and we see available commands. You'll note that while validate is in there, the one we just created, we also see that there are two other commands that are provided by Cobra. This is completion and help. We're not going to go into that now, but those are useful to know about and valuable for your users. So if we do go run main.go validate, we see that validate was called. That's our print line that's happening up here. This is what we need to replace. Uh, we can do help and it will give us the detailed information. The only flags are the H flag the dash dash help flag. So let's update this to actually do something. We can look at our previous main.go and figure out how validate should work. So we know we want a file name and these are all for the convert, which we're not going to use. So what we really wanna do is to read the file name and if there are errors, we print them out. Should be easy enough. We're gonna paste this in here. Um, Instead of using OS args one though, we're gonna use args zero and we're gonna rename this to be camel cased. Okay. We don't actually use a story here, so we'll underscore that. And that means we don't have any new variables, so we can do that. Um, you know, if there's nothing wrong with it, we can print out story is valid. I think that makes sense. So in line 18, we'll get rid of that. I think we'll have to guard against the argument not being passed. The good news is Cobra actually has support for arguments not being passed. So if we hop over here and we go to cobra.dev, we can look for args and find, here we go. Exact args one is what we want. So let's just see if we can find an example of that. Yeah, there's minimum here, minimum. Okay, so we'll just copy this and change it to exact args. Awesome, let's try this out. Go run main.go. Now we'll pass in validate as our command. And it says we accept one argument, we receive zero, and we see the usage here. So we know, aha, we need to pass in a file name. So let's give that a try. We will first do package parser test data, and we'll do our invalid file first. And we see that we get all the errors that we wanted. That's fantastic. If we do the valid, file, we see story is valid. This is a good start. So let's commit and get into the convert. For convert, we're going to use the CLI to make a new command the same way we did for validate. So we'll paste this in here, Cobra CLI add convert. The initial part of convert is going to be a lot like validate because we still need to read the file and parse it as a story. So, hmm, I think we also want to show errors if some exist. Maybe we just say that there are errors and prompt you to use the validate command. So we'll grab this and hop back over to convert. And we'll want to update our description here, but we'll do that in a minute. Uh, so if the error's nil, we will say, Empty up print line error parsing story. Please run Squire validate for more information. I like that. And then we'll exit. Feels good. I'm going to briefly update the short and long description here. That looks pretty good. And we do actually want the exact args one. I may massage this later, um, but I feel like that's a, a decent first stab at the long description. Excellent. So if we get this far, we have a story and we need to actually do something with the story. 
we're going to need some flags for this because we can convert to a format, which is EPUB, inner HTML, or HTML. And we can also specify the file name. So we're going to get rid of this and we'll say convert command dot flags. Okay, this feels useful, but what we actually want to do is to use string var key format. And what this will do is set our value for a variable called format, which we haven't defined yet, uh, to the result of what the user has put in here. So let's come up here and we'll do var format is going to be a string. And we also know we're going to have output file name, which will be a string. Okay. So convert, oh, well, that's just a typo. And that looks good. And the other thing we'll say is that this is a required flag. So convert command dot required, mark flag required, there we go, is going to be format. And then let's see how this actually plays out. So we'll just underscore our story for now so that we can give this a try. So uh, let's see, we have validate here. Okay, so we'll do convert instead of validate. And we get the format is not set, that's an error. And it tells us what formats are available, which is very helpful. The problem is you can actually pass in a format that is gibberish and doesn't correspond to the available formats. There's no validation that a value is in a set for Cobra. So you kind of have to bring your own version of that. So what we'll say is if format is none of these things, then we'll print this out. You'll notice that there's some duplication of EPUB, HTML, inner HTML. So we have it on this conditional, we have it on this, we have it on this, we have it on this. These are all prime candidates for refactoring, but we're going to push forward for now. So the other thing we want to do is get the output file name, and I think this is fine. And so we'll say defaults to output plus the extension for format. And let's just see what that looks like. All right, we need to close off our friend there. Perfect, okay. So now uh, we've, we've told a lie, and what we need to do is make this lie a, a truth. So let's make the thing that we said we could do actually work. If we have a story here, we will convert the story. We'll pass in the original file name. Actually, we don't need that. We do need the format and the output file name. So let's just drop this. And then we're going to reach over into our original main.go, because we have some code here we can use. Hmm, why was I using the file name here? Ah, because I did want the root directory. Okay, you know what? My mistake, we'll take that back. Okay, so we're gonna grab this and there's going to be a behavior change here. So we will specify our convert function and we'll change this behavior. So. Previously, if you didn't specify an output file name, we would print everything to the terminal as a string of bytes. We actually don't want to do that anymore. What we want to do is to say, if the output file name is blank, then output file name is going to be this. And that's not exactly right because format could be inline HTML and that's not a valid file extension. So what we're actually going to do is have a lookup table here, extension format, and then up here, we can specify that. So EPUB is EPUB, HTML is HTML, inner HTML, also HTML. Okay. Let's give this a try and see how it feels. So we'll run our convert on our invalid file, and it says, hey, you need to specify the format. So we can do that, we'll specify EPUB, and it says, error parsing story, please run Squire validate for more information. And that's intentional. We told it to do that, but one of my pet peeves is when an application knows what needs to be done, 
but it doesn't go the extra step to do it for you. It's like, hey, you know what? You need to actually go over here and do this thing. Uh, what we could do is just show the error messages here. So we're gonna do that. So we will go over into validate. And what we're going to do here is pull out a function and this will be show validation errors and we'll just pass in error. I think typically we'll want to exit one, but I'm happy to repeat that for now. So this will be show validation error errors and we do that. Uh, and we also need the file name, that's fine. Just a string. So we'll hop down here and pass in the file name. Great. So over in convert, we can now do that instead. So this is a small change for us, but the ergonomics here are way better. So now instead of it telling me to, hey, go do this, this work that I could have done for you, it's going to show all of this. And we can add in one more thing here, which is um, before we do that, we will fmt.println stories invalid. And we're not going to exit actually, because we still want the user, the user may have a mostly valid story that they still want to look around at. So what we'll do is just do the best we can. All right, so here we go. We'll dump that out. Uh, story is invalid, but we do have an output.epub. So if we open our ebook viewer on output.epub, we will see a fairly broken epub, but it at least is viewable. All right, so back to the happy path. Let's get our valid.md. We won't pass in a format. It tells us, hey, we need a format. So we'll do that uh, and we'll do HTML this time. And it should write output.html. You know what? It might be nice to actually say that. So let's do that. Um, fmt.println written to output.fileName. Perfect. Okay, so now we know where it's going. And if we just look at output.html, we see that our story is here and it all works as intended. You can see the previous video if you wanna know how all of this works. Um, so then we can also just make sure we can do, uh, let's type in gibberish. Okay, that's an invalid. Ooh, it still wrote it. Okay, so this is a problem. We need to exit if it's not a valid format. Great, and let's try that again. Perfect. So it did not write its output. Um, then the last thing that we can do is do the inline HTML version, and that's still going to write to output.html. But if we cat output.html now, uh, we see that it ends in a div instead of closing off all of the HTML. Perfect. We can remove this old main.go. The only thing left to do is to update our readme with the new install instructions, and that's actually straightforward. So instead of this, we're going to be looking at this. We're really just deleting some content here. Easy enough. This subcommand approach feels so much cleaner. There's a clear separation of concerns, and having things broken down into subcommands means we know where all the functionality goes, and as we introduce new functionality, it will have its own home in its own subcommand. Thanks for joining me, and if you enjoyed this video, drop a like and subscribe. Until next time.